simply be done. Uh, our job is to put our values above political expediency. If we do these things, uh, we will quickly see those ideas embraced by an overwhelming majority of Americans. Uh, my party will be the majority party, uh, and our country will see an, our country will see another century as the last one was referred to as the American century. What happened on Tuesday? is a great moment for us to move into a greater future and to recommit ourselves to what we're for uh, and to work hard so that the people we work with and work around, the people we represent, understand the difference that it makes the philosophy you pursue. Thank you for letting me be here today. We have um, time for a couple of questions, and I just ask that uh, you look for the microphone, which I assume is here, uh, and just identify yourself for the benefit of Congressman Blunt. Why don't you come up here? Right. Great. Sure. Uh, um, Roman Bueller, I used to be a counsel at the Committee on House Administration. Now I'm a consulting practice here in Washington. When you talk to state legislators around the country, one of the things that makes them, especially conservatives, but not only conservatives, angriest about the federal government is unfunded mandates. And uh, we passed a law to ban unfunded mandates, and yet in the last few years we've had a number of them, including, as you so correctly mentioned, uh, the No Child Left Behind. Uh, some people claimed that the Help America Vote Act was an unfunded mandate. Some people argue that the, uh, that the Real ID Act is an unfunded mandate. What do you think the federal government ought to do to, or are there structural changes that are needed to prevent uh, the federal government from, from continuing this practice, or is that really not, not a major issue? I, I think it is a major issue, and I think one of the ways that you best defend against that issue is to constantly uh, find the touchstone of what the federal government is supposed to do. Uh, in all of those things you mentioned, those are not primarily the responsibility of the federal government. And when the federal government steps in, almost always creates more uh, paperwork, more reporting, more withdrawal from the immediate problem. Uh, you know, I used to be the chief election official in Missouri when I was the Secretary of State there. And as I said before, both the House and the Senate committees, uh, that beginning to try to, to define and dictate uh, uh, election practices from Washington, D.C., or decide that you're going to decide in Washington what's, what's the, what's, how you're going to impact the traditional voting uh, patterns and laws of a state, uh, you're way beyond where the federal government should get. Uh, and those would be, I think, we, we best protect states from that kind of intrusion uh, by constantly asking ourselves if this is really a job for the federal government. If it's not a job for the federal government, uh, does any government or any citizen really benefit from the federal government injecting itself to a, to a, a job that it's not uh, the government should be worried about? You know, we have state and local government for a reason. We came up with this unique system, uh, unique in the world at the time and still relatively new, unique in the world, uh, where we left things to the states, where we decided early on, as I still believe, that most problems will find the best solution closest to the problem. Uh, and we need to be always working to keep that solution there until, it's, until we, we know that it can't be solved there and then move it to the state capital if you have to, and then move it to Washington. But only, this should be the government of last resort for most things. The government, it's the government of first resort to defend the country. It's the government of first resort uh, to conduct foreign policy. But it's the government of last resort for so many of the problems we face. And we get in the way of the good solutions when we try to mandate some sort of one-size-fits-all uh, federal solution. And we cost local taxpayers a lot of money when we do that. Uh, Congressman, I appreciate your remarks and sort of rock-ribbed uh, approach to conservatism. Uh, I'm with Congressman Fitzpatrick's office, and I uh, took a tough beating, a uh, close one, just recently. Um, given your comments, uh, how do you think they will work in the Northeast and also the Mountain West, where we've taken some beatings on the Republican side recently? And uh, the study committee, the Republican study committee, often is referring to the Northeast particularly as sort of the, the squishy ones or the soft ones and not really giving them a lot of latitude uh, when it comes to what reaches the House floor. 
And I'm just curious, what your, your what do you think the future is for the Northeast and the Mountain West? You know, I've always, I've always thought my job as the Republican whip in the House was to know the Republicans better than anybody else in the building, and frankly, to know the Democrats better than any other Republican. Always thinking, how can we reach out and get some help to do the hard work we need to do? Uh, but as you look at the principles I've talked about today, uh, the principles of being sure that, our, that, that what we're, we're for as a values agenda is really what we're for, that there's no, uh, our motive is there is not to impact politics, but to impact the society we live in, uh, that we're constantly trying to define the federal government in a way that uh, uh, not only defines what it does, but then insists that whatever it does, it really do well. Uh, I think uh, it, the people I've had the great opportunity to serve with, like Mike Fitzpatrick, like Sue Kelly, uh, like so many of, of our great members, Nancy Johnson, Chris Shays in the Northeast, uh, one of the things they get most excited about is when we talk about how can the federal government do what it does better. You know, when uh, any chain... Uh, uh, any chain store in America that has uh, locations all over the country, Walmart, Target, anybody else, they know when they've just sold a, a roll of paper towels uh, and what store that paper towel, j that roll of paper towels just left. Uh, the federal government doesn't know whether the, uh, the visitors to our country from other countries are here or not without having several days of searching to find out. You know, when, when Target can keep better track of their paper towels, then the federal government, and the same technology should be available to everybody, then the federal government can legal visitors to the country, not even to talk about illegal visitors to the country, uh, something is, is really wrong with the government that's got that far behind. I think one of the things really wrong is that that government has tried to do too much and then winds up not doing any of it very well. And I think that works in the Northeast where I've campaigned with candidates in many of these districts just as well as it does uh, in the Southwest and uh, consistency of, of uh, commitment and message, I think is what uh, voters that elect members of Congress are, are as eager for as they are anything else. And I think those principles work uh, in, your, in uh, Mike Fitzpatrick's district or in mine. One more question? And the last question is? Um. What do you think the balance should be in the future between the conservatives' social agenda and the conservatives' fiscal agenda? Uh, it seems to me that recently more of the social agenda has been done, but not at the expense of the fiscal part. Should there be a 50-50 balance, 70-30, what? You know, I, I think actually based on even my comments today and, and my, my, my deeply felt beliefs on this, that when you start talking about a balance or even on those values issues, probably making a mistake that we ought to do the things necessary to secure the fundamental uh, values of the country. Uh, and we also, one of those fundamental values is believing uh, in families, believing in the, in the free enterprise system, uh, believing uh, that families do a better job with their money than the federal government does. Uh, and and there is a, there's a real crossover there in what we're for fiscally and what we're for socially. Uh, a belief that, uh, again, a functioning family is going to be better than any government program. Now, all, all, all uh, families don't function, and you may have to have a social program, a charitable program, or, or a government program that moves in, but nobody believes that a functioning family is beat by a government program. Just like nobody who ever got an artificial heart has ever said, uh, my artificial heart works better than my original heart worked when it was working the way it was supposed to. Nobody's ever said that. Uh, and the same about family. So, you know, being fiscally responsible is the same. It, it, it really carries over uh, into that social agenda. Uh, it is a, a job one for us to define the federal government and what it does and insist that it do it well. And if we define it properly, uh, that meets the definition. That, that begins to turn around that culture of spending as well. I think there are great opportunities for us, uh, again, I'll just say, think back, 1964, 1976, 1992, all seemed like they were a significant problem, but right around the corner of each of those defeats was an opportunity to come back more focused, more dedicated, more committed, uh, better communicating and better understood than conservatives had been before. I think that's going to be the case after 2006. And that effort needs to start right now. Thank you all for letting me be here.